So we've discussed now two Imperial Star Destroyers utilized by two key Imperial leaders, the Devastator and the Chimera, but today we're going to take a look at two more crucial Imperial class Star Destroyers, the Executrix and the Overseer. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So, many of us are probably familiar with the Overseer, so we'll start with the Executrix, which played a crucial role and was under the command of a very notable Imperial leader. Let's talk about the Executrix, the personal Star Destroyer of Grand Moff Tarkin. So the Executrix was, for all intents and purposes, a standard Imperial One-class Star Destroyer. Unlike the Chimera, which underwent some minor modifications, the Executrix would have been indistinguishable from any other Star Destroyer in Tarkin's fleet. It still played a crucial role in several battles leading up to the events of A New Hope, and I figured today we'll just jump right into that. So, for starters, the Executrix is just a standard run-of-the-mill Imperial One-class Star Destroyer on paper. It's no different from any of the other Star Destroyers that would be under this ship's command within a fleet. What really sets this vessel apart is its history, its story, and who commanded it. You see, from the very early days, the Executrix was under the direct command of Grand Moff Tarkin, even before he was a Grand Moff, when he was just an Imperial officer. And on top of that, it seems kind of likely that it was one of the first Imperial One-class Star Destroyers to roll off the assembly line, being in Imperial fleets in the very early days of the Reign of the Empire. It was from the command bridge of the Executrix that Tarkin carried out purges against rebel factions in the Salient. The battles in the Salient were a series of very long, drawn-out engagements against these forces that were really remnants of the Separatists following the end of the Clone Wars, and these campaigns were particularly brutal, which shouldn't surprise anyone who knows anything about Grand Moff Tarkin. That being said, he did remain in command of the Executrix basically all the way up to the completion of the Death Star. But there were a few breaks here or there. There was a period of time when his flagship, his command, was moved to a Star Destroyer known as Sovereign. However, that was damaged by actions of other rebel forces, and his command was transferred back to the Executrix. And we know that it was from the bridge of the Executrix that he witnessed the final touches being placed on the battle station, on the Death Star. In fact, that's the only time we actually see the Executrix on screen, which is during the events of Rogue One. It's one of the Star Destroyers, it actually is the Star Destroyer that Krennic is summoned to when he has to report to Grand Moff Tarkin. It's from the bridge of this Star Destroyer that we see the super laser being uh, mounted onto the battle station. And with the completion of the Death Star, Tarkin's command moved from the Executrix to the battle station itself, but he did keep the Executrix close. Like the Devastator, the Executrix was docked to the Battle Station. However, the big difference is the Devastator was sent away before the Battle of Yavin, the Executrix was not. And when the Death Star was destroyed, unfortunately, the Executrix was destroyed with it. So that's the story of the Executrix. Now let's talk about the one that a lot more of you are probably familiar with, the Overseer. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell, that's understandable. The Overseer actually played a crucial role in the events of Star Wars Squadrons. It's the Star Destroyer that the campaign basically takes place from, from the Imperial side. The Overseer is a pretty standard Imperial II-class Star Destroyer under the command of Teresa Carroll. We don't know much about the early history of this vessel, but we do know that during the Galactic Civil War, it played a part in the battles of Pothor and Jarrell. At some point before the events of Star Wars Squadrons, the Overseer was tasked with protecting the shipyards over Var Shaw, a set of crucial Imperial shipyards for rebuilding Imperial-class Star Destroyers. Now, if anyone's seen the short film Hunted, you know how that ends. Var Shaw is destroyed and the Overseer is forced to retreat. Later on, the Overseer would find itself a crucial element in the Empire's attempt to stop Project Starhawk, the Rebel Alliance and now New Republic's efforts to build a vessel to counter the Imperial-class Star Destroyers. This led the vessel to the Xavian Abyss, where it stared down a brand new Republic Starhawk and, well, lost. It got caught in the Republic Starhawk's tractor beam and was just barely able to escape, and the sort of priorities of this vessel became to destroy the construction facility that had built this vessel. After carrying out a very targeted attack against Mon Cala to drag rebel forces away, the Overseer carried out a very targeted attack against the Nadiri shipyards, the shipyards that were responsible for tearing down old Imperial-class Star Destroyers to get parts to construct new, new Republic Starhawks. 
Well, the Overseer was able to significantly damage the shipbuilding facilities, New Republic forces were able to show up and sort of interdict that process, and one of the Starhawks, which was basically completed, was able to slip away into a nearby debris field, which the Overseer pursued it into. That led both the Overseer and this New Republic Starhawk to the Gallatin system, where the squadrons based on board this Star Destroyer were eventually able to destroy the Starhawk, knocking out its internal uh, energy management system, and destroying it in a way that was kind of similar to the way the Death Star was destroyed. With the Starhawk crippled, while well, other Imperial forces refused to retreat from the system and wanted to continue pursuing New Republic forces, the Overseer would jump out of the system and from that point its story basically ends. We don't know where it ended up following the remainder of the war. Still, both the Executrix and the Overseer played very crucial roles in the history of the Empire and the Galactic Civil War. They had very strong impacts on the history of the galaxy as a whole, and so did a lot of other Imperial-class Star Destroyers. If you'd like to learn about the Devastator, Darth Vader's personal Star Destroyer, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments if you have any other Imperial-class Star Destroyers you'd like to see me talk about. Do you have any other Star Destroyers that you think played a huge role in galactic history that you'd like to hear their story told? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars, leave it down below in the comments as well. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.